Welcome back to the Matt Yasa channel. I have a fun episode for you today, Electromagnetism. Which is to create a magnetic field using electricity. So I'm starting out by blowing a hole open in this tube and flaring it for the first experiment. I'm planning to wind some copper wire around it and then use a battery to create a magnetic field. And so I'm scoring it here a little ways down the tube and I'm going to add some water and try to push it into that crack. That water will definitely give you a cleaner break, making sure that the end is more even when you go into the flare. One trick to stabilize your jacks is to hold the tips of them against the inside wall as you rotate the tube around. And so this will be my first ever attempt at making an electromagnet. I've never really done this before. I did do some research, a little bit of reading to figure out what to do. I made sure not to watch any videos though. I didn't want to accidentally copy their methods. You know, I kind of wanted to figure it out in my own way. So I'm gonna start with my smallest battery and work my way up and see what happens. A little bit, but I think that's just stuck. Oh, maybe. I don't know. But I can feel the coil is quite a bit hot. Here's a 6 volt battery. Ooh, that is definitely just hot. All right, so glass itself is not ferromagnetic. However, this metal bolt is, so I'm going to put it inside the tube and let's see if it'll conduct a magnetic field when I attach the battery. Oh, look at that. And we got magnetism. By adding it inside, you can see it's not contacting, I can feel it's getting a little hot, uh, but it's not contacting the bolt on the ends. It's going through, oh, what? Oh, I went touching the bolt. It is definitely more powerful at the bolt. Oops. One in there, and now the other one. Boom, wow, wow. Picked up like the whole thing, the whole thing got hot. Like super hot, but I picked up the entire stack. Did you see that? And so as I said before about figuring it out with my own methods, uh, like here, I'm not really sure how it should be wound. I'm just kind of winding it as tight as I can. My research just said a wound coil. It didn't really give much specifics. And so I have the iron wand from the glass wand episode. I have it decked out here with a few parts. The copper coil, the wires, positive and negative, the battery, and also a little switch. And then the handle here is a clear glass frit. That way when I closed up the end, I was just heating up the frit and not the iron itself. So here we go for the first test. I hope it works. There we go. Uh-oh. Can we get low enough? Quite working. Not sure if it's a connection problem. Well, well, I do feel some warmth coming through. Uh -oh. I don't think it's working.
Time for Iron Wand 2.0. The solid metal core should work much better than the powder, and it fits the tube perfectly. You can see how clean those edges are. If you plan to use them as blow tubes, they are still sharp enough to cut your lip. So you want to hold them in the flame for a moment to melt down the sharp edges. And so I'm just heating up the end and puffing out a little bit to fit better for the tip of that tool. And I'm thinking the solid core version should work a little better. I did some tests with a permanent neodymium magnet using the powdered iron wand versus the bolt experiment from this video. And the bolt experiment did a lot better with the neodymium magnet. Basically, for the iron wand, the powder has to align kind of on the microscopic level in order to transfer the charge correctly where it wants to go. And so with the bolt or the solid rod here, everything's kind of already aligned, kind of physically uniform. And so the magnetic charge can just kind of flow right through it instead of having to pull all that powder together first. And so in lamp working, I talk about this quite a bit, you have to be very careful with enclosing containers with air trapped inside. Most likely the vessel will be hot and the air will expand out of the vessel, so when you close it up and it returns to room temperature, it will actually be under a very negative pressure. The frit will help displace a lot of the air, however there is enough still trapped in there to cause weird things to happen. Once it's closed like this, as I begin to reheat it, it could actually pop or explode. So I'm working very, very slowly. A couple other videos where I've closed things up like this uh, would be the Galileo thermometer and the hourglass. Both of them tools of measurement. They worked out pretty well. You should check them out. And here I'm winding the coil up. I had to figure out a couple ways to make it a little easier on myself. It was kind of a hard process. I had to keep a lot of tension on it or else it would start to unwind. But I wanted to note real quick, I definitely do not recommend trying this one at home. With the battery and the heat, there is a risk that you could start a little fire. And on top of that, this is my first time attempting this project. I'm not sure if I have everything correct here, but that's definitely part of the learning process. I've had a lot of fun with this one for sure. Now, one of the videos that I do recommend that is a bit similar and safe for all ages would be the water bending experiment. That one was really cool. And so the positive side of the battery connects against this white wire, which leads up to the bottom of the coil, which will then connect to this black wire at the top of the coil, which leads back through a switch to the negative side of the battery. First test of the Magnet Wand 2.0. The first one had a powder core, which just wasn't a uh, strong enough conductor to conduct the magnetic field. So this one with the solid core should have a much better result. So wish me luck here. This is a 1.2 volt rechargeable battery, so it's not really a lot of power I have to worry about. And then on top of that, I'm keeping things as simple as I can, kind of just winding things together and using some tape here and there. Just that way you can get a better understanding with the raw look of it. But here we go, first test. Hope it works. Oh. That didn't work there. Having some kind of connection issue here. I'll figure it out. I'm actually feeling much. I'm feeling the heat though. Oh, 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 what's that? What's that? I saw a little bit of something like holding it here. And that's the thing, it's just this kind of simple connection thing I'm, I got going back here. But it looked like something was standing. Let's try this again. 
Pull in the back, pull in the front. Oh, look at that. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, that was so cool. That was so cool. It's not that powerful. Um, the coil is super cold. Like, that's the surprising thing. Uh, hold on. Okay, so it's not, I gotta get a little bit here. Oh. Uh, uh. Okay, I added a little bit of tape to keep this, uh, the positive on there. Okay, here we go. So. Oh, there we go. And drop. Pick it up and drop. Pick it up and drop. Pick it up and drop. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, and this is cold too. That's the weird thing. Like, why was it heat not before? I don't know enough about electronics. I'll figure it out though. Pick it up and drop. Pick it up and drop. Pick it up and drop. Pick it up. Oh. Pick it up and drop. Pick it up and drop. And I can put a much stronger battery on here. This is the weakest battery I can get. So I'm just starting out with small and working my way up and kind of testing it. Pick it up and then drop it. Pick it up and then drop it. Pick it up and then drop it. Oh, I'm having so much fun here. Oh, the power. Eat more power. I keep my hand around the battery just, oh wow. Ooh, look at that. I do feel a little warmth now. Just a little bit. You like this bar fly? Yeah. Exciting, isn't it? Magnetism. Electricity. Coming together. I know. That's what I think too. Now it's meowy. I need to upgrade the battery to get the rest of this. Two batteries in a series creating 2.4 volts. We'll see what happens. There we go. Oh, stuck. Now it does seem like there's a charge that's like left over. I'm not holding the button down, but you can see it's still picking it up. Maybe the metal is just holding on to the charge a little bit. I know you can temporarily charge metal by rubbing a magnet on it. Wow, look at that. Definitely a lot more power. Definitely more power there. Whoop. Leftover charge there. So if I disconnect the battery, it, yeah, it's still there. Battery's completely disconnect on the back. This still has a little bit of a charge left. So like I said, it makes it a little hard now to drop it if it's still holding on to it. It's the only problem there. All right, I'll be adding another battery. Just like this. So that's three batteries in a series, 1.2 each. So that'd be 3.6. Whoa.
Wow. That's how you clean up. Start sticking back. Oh. Let go. I have my large six volt battery here. We'll check it out. Whoa, look at that. That's warm, but not like very, very warm. Not like it was burning my fingers. Cool. Let's see what else you can pick up too while I'm at it. Wow, look at that. The whole bolt from the bolt test. Get it across the coils. And so that last test brings us to the end of this episode. What a magnifyingly magnificent one it was. I hope you were mesmerized by the miracles of science. And I want to thank you again for tuning into the Matt Yasa channel.